So here we are on top of an elevator and we're going to examine these hoist ropes. The ropes in this case do have some rouge in between the uh, strands of the rope. There is some redness that I hope comes through uh, in the video. We are going to uh, take our gauge and place it on the, on the rope. Uh, the gauge does have a slight step in it so if the rope fits up to the first step that means the rope needs replacement if there is any rouge evident if there is no rouge then the rope has to go all the way down to the bottom of the groove in the gauge so in this case we see that the rope does fit on so considering there's already rouge this rope does need replacement. I'm going to try it at a right angle and you see that it also fits this way. However, if there was no rouge on this rope, it wouldn't warrant replacement because the gauge does not fit on all the way to the end of the groove. So we'll now proceed to another section where uh, either there is more rouge or no uh, rouge at all and we'll try, try our gauge on that and uh, the other thing to note is the tension on these ropes so if you do have unequal tension on the ropes that uh, causes an uh, unfavorable condition for the hoist ropes and the elevator code does uh, speak to that so with unfavorable conditions if there are any broken wires in the hoist rope, then you only need half the required number of broken wires to uh, order the ropes uh, replace or that they do warrant the rope uh, replacement with only half the number of broken wires. So in this case, we do see some crown wear in the ropes. The tension of one of the ropes is way out. Uh, and also the evidence of rouge. So these are all issues that accelerate the deterioration of the rope. So here we are at a spot where one of the ropes has no rouging. Uh, so the second rope here, I'm going to place the gauge on it and you see that the gauge does not go on at all. It barely fits on at the edge but it does not go in as much and there's no rouge on this cable. So if all the cables were in this kind of condition, then we would not order the cables replaced. Now the cable beside it, again the gauge goes on much further because of the loss of diameter and of course these cables do have rouge and you see that the gauge fits on quite further in. Uh, it's important to note that when you're checking the loss of diameter using these gauges, you do have to have the gauge fit in at right angles. Uh, we no longer have to go to various spots and check the gauge there. We only need to check uh, the ropes at the worst uh, point that we find on the cables. So here we are in an existing elevator machine room and speaking about existing hoist ropes with various issues that warrant replacement. So we already have some signs on this floor of rouge and rust even though this floor is painted red there's also this red dust that comes off the ropes and here it's apparent on this machine where the machine base is covered with red dust from the hoist ropes and upon closer inspection of the hoist ropes you can see the red rouge between the uh, strands of each rope so when we do have this condition of the hoist ropes having rouge if there is any loss of diameter detected with a appropriate gauge for the size of the rope, then the ropes do have to be replaced. Also, if there are any breaks in the individual wires of the hoist rope, 
then we don't need the usual number of brakes to warrant the replacement of the ropes. Rather, we need half the number of broken wires when rouge is present and those ropes need to be replaced. elevator where the ropes were replaced after we had written an order to replace them because of uh, rouge and the number of wire breaks. They have replaced the ropes, they've used the existing shackles, they have installed new rope clips uh, which is good. The lower rope clip is pretty close to the uh, wet socket shackle which is good and the other one is supposed to be within eight times of the rope diameter from the bottom one and they are there so they do have two rope clips so the only thing we're missing here is the rope tank uh, for these new ropes so here you see a couple of old rope tanks the elevator cross heads the frame up here has the original tag from the manufacturer which tells us what type of ropes, what size and number of ropes we need. And the new ropes are supposed to come with a rope tag which will confirm that the ropes installed here are the same as what the tag from the original manufacturer required. And we don't have this rope tags for the new uh, ropes that have been installed. Otherwise, we're in pretty good shape. One of the other things we check for with rope replacement is that once the new set of ropes have been installed, we make sure that the rope is fed through the uh, sockets in the correct orientation. So wet sockets, as you can see, have a tapered side and a flat side. So the rope has to enter the socket through the flat side around the wedge, which is inside, and come out on the tapered side to the dead end of the rope. And that is the case here. If they had installed the rope incorrectly, it would have to be taken apart and installed in the correct orientation that the manufacturer of the white sockets got. So the other uh, thing that we would check with the hoist rope replacement is that the uh, shackle rods underneath are actually correctly terminated and secured. So we can take a look underneath now, and you see that we have these springs, uh, which help equalize the tension in the ropes, as well as uh, help with a better ride for the elevator cap. And then we have double knots and a cotter pin securing each rope end. So we would just make sure that they're correctly installed. There are no missing pieces the springs aren't broken, the double knots are actually locked together, and there is a backup cotter pin for each one. We would also check that the hoist ropes are sitting on the drive shift correctly, and they're not crossed on top of each other after installation. Condition of the drive shift and deflector shift grooves are also very important. Uh, if you do have issues with the grooves of the shifts, that does constitute what's called an unfavorable condition for the hoist ropes. And the deterioration of the hoist ropes can be accelerated by these conditions. And as a result, we would ask that they're replaced sooner with uh, half the number of brakes uh, compared to ropes that don't have these unfavorable conditions on the site. So another item to check once the hoist ropes have been replaced is the counterweight run by, which means that the length of the ropes are correct for the size of the building. So here we see that there is a little bit of space between the bottom of the counterweight and the buffer. Once the counterweight has come to the bottom and the elevator cab is at the top. So if the hoist rope length is not correct, the counterweight could actually be touching the buffer or could be stopping too far up when the car is at the top floor. So just another thing that needs to be checked and uh, corrected 
if there are issues with the length of the new hoist ropes.